On September 27th, a 15 year old girl was murdered in Croydon. This is a, a massive story. She was stabbed in the neck by a machete, if you can imagine that. I can't say too much about this because it's subjudice and the rules of, uh, well, there is such a thing as contempt of court in Britain. Uh, in America, it's virtually non existent because police officers, sheriffs, prosecutors go online in front of millions of people and, and virtually pronounce the suspect guilty. I'll say only that a 17 year old youth, a boy, has been charged with her murder. Because of his age, his name's not been released. He may be 18 by the time he comes to trial, if he comes to trial. I will say only that the person responsible for this should be locked up until after Haley's Comet returns in 2061. I won't be here then, that's for sure. It's absolutely horrifying. I went shopping in Croydon on October 2nd. Got off a train at West Croydon Station. Made my way up Poplar Walk. And there were signs on the way there. Uh, the uh, To the uh, tribute. Well, I can't remember the wording, but it was this way, basically. Near Sainsbury's. To the flower tribute. And it wasn't so much a tribute as a shrine. It reminded me of the shrine to Diana a long time ago, before that girl was born. No one is big, of course, but it was still very impressive. There were you know, soft toys there, as well as loads of flowers. There had been a guest book, but it was full up, or it couldn't be signed at the moment. And, you know, I mean, 15 years old, it's. It's too young to die, period. However, notorious as this murder is just starting to become, there have been others. There was a, a kid who was murdered, stabbed through the heart in Croydon in 2021. But there are two other murders I'd like to mention. One supposedly controversial, well, the, the execution of one of the people concerned is said to be controversial. I don't think it was that controversial. So the conviction wasn't. I mean, you can argue against the, the death sentence. Uh, at that time, murder was capital. You could argue against the sentence, but not, not really against the conviction. And the other is of a uh, was of a murder of a young girl, a teenager, slightly older than Eliane and Dam, in circumstances that were even more outrageous, if you can imagine that. On November 2nd, 1952, two juvenile delinquents, I suppose you call them, Christopher Craig and Derek Bentley, were trying to burgle a warehouse in Croydon or on the rooftop and what happened was the police turned up Craig who was 16 years old was armed with a revolver a 455 Webley caliber revolver at that time guns were well they weren't illegal, let me put it that way, but there were still a lot of guns in, in, in circulation after the Second World War. And somehow this 16 year old kid got hold of a gun. The police turned up and <coughs> Craig didn't want to, well he wasn't going to be taken easily, I won't say he wasn't going to be taken alive, but it's absolutely stupid of I me, mean, burglary. He ended up shooting uh, police officers. He, he shot a detective, a non-fatal injury, and he also shot 
a police constable, Sidney Miles, shot him in the head. And headshots are usually fatal, not always, but this case, this time was. And <clears throat> there was a great deal of manufactured controversy about the case because Craig was too young to hang, Bentley was not. Uh, Craig was actually lucky to survive because he jumped through a uh, well he, he fell a long way put it that way and he was taken to court on a stretcher he broke his back or something uh, he he was released uh, many many years later he was released I don't know what happened to him I think I saw him in a documentary or something many years later I think he was, was bald actually but Derek Bentley uh, who didn't fire the gun and there's a lot of so-called controversy about letting him have it, Chris, and Chris let him have it. So he was sentenced to death. They were both convicted. He was sentenced to death. And there was a massive campaign because it, it, basically Derek Bentley was a retard and a, and a waste of space. I'm not saying that he couldn't have made something of his life. Even retards can do that. But, you know, I mean... I, I, I always think that uh, most people think and law thinks that youth deserves a lot of leeway this is one reason there's anonymity for um, juvenile prosecutions in the United States they can have a record sealed but the, that leeway carries only so far I mean the, the, the murder of James Bolger for example by two ten-year-olds I mean even 10 year olds know that uh, like a 10 year old may not understand that bribery is wrong or some sort of corruption but any kid of that age knows murder is wrong but Bentley was <clears throat> he was hanged there was uh, a, a big campaign well there was a big campaign to reprieve him and that didn't happen and there was a big campaign for a posthumous pardon and um, eventually it was granted shouldn't have been but you know little boys shouldn't play with guns any more than they should play with knives especially big knives especially machetes if you don't recognize this alluring creature she is or was Sally Ann Bowman who was murdered in Croydon September 2005 her body was found well she was stabbed to death you know, she was probably was found in the doorway alluring or not she had a fiery temper and she had been out with her boyfriend Lewis Sproston and they'd had a sort of an argument she snatched a, a chain from his neck and when her body was found he was the last person to see her alive the last but one as it happens the police went to him and he sounded guilty right away um, I was about that incident <laughs> and he was arrested and they kept this poor kid in the police station for four days until DNA results came back and they showed Sally Ann had been raped but not by him they must have been very disappointed she was actually murdered by an incredibly depraved individual named Mark Dixie and when I say depraved I mean depraved because she appears to have been murdered then raped if you can imagine that she wasn't the first woman Dixie had attacked that night he was nabbed by DNA after being involved in, a, in an altercation a fairly minor one very minor one at least DNA taken Dixie had been a chef and he'd worked all over the place including Spain and Australia he's believed to have attacked if not murdered women in Australia in August 2003 a Dutchman named Romano van der Dussen was given a 15 year sentence in Spain for the rape of a woman 
his crime was to bear a facial resemblance to Dixie and eventually Dixie would do the one decent thing in his life he confessed to that uh, rape and eventually this, <coughs> this poor bloke was well he was released from prison and then his, his conviction was quashed I think in that order at his trial <laughs> this, this is uh, Dixie's defence such as it was was that he hadn't murdered Sally Ann but he'd come across her body and oh just <sighs> there were calls after Dixie's conviction for a DNA database like uh, from birth in Britain there were lots of people who want that the late Jill Saywood wanted that she was the victim of the Ealing Vicarage rape particularly nasty rape and she was no shrinking violet she her comments on date rape annoyed the, the sisterhood maybe Lewis Broster would like a, a database because 60 years earlier it could well have been hanged and he isn't the first person uh, in 60 years earlier he'd probably been verbaled up or a confession beaten out of him by the police so that's two other murders in Croydon I've never been attacked in Croydon I like the place you know it's it's changed a lot the city centre is all walk around now and the manufactured recession depression lockdowns have impacted Croydon more than many other places but it's always seemed reasonably safe to me very safe but then I don't usually hang out there at night and I don't get into arguments with teenagers the one who allegedly murdered Eliane who was supposed to have given her flowers which she rejected and then totally senseless all these murders were senseless the vast majority of murders are senseless but some are far far worse than others <laughs>